This is Gordon, a research and development manager of X Fishery. He sees that not a lot of people in his area consume a lot of fish, especially sardine, and thus the sales drop and a lot of fishes are thrown away due to the loss of freshness. He proposed to his boss to produce canned sardine products. His boss, who is merely just a great businesswoman, do not know anything about canned product and asked Gordon to explain to her. Canned foods or shelf-stable canned foods are packed in hermetically sealed containers or airtight containers and are commercially sterile. Canning is intended to destroy harmful microbes in food by subjecting to heat treatment that should be sufficient to destroy all the heat-sensitive bacteria and spores, inactivate the enzymes and cook the fish so that the product remains acceptable to the consumer after prolonged storage. However, with improper handling, cans will become breeding grounds for microbes. Canning provides a typical shelf life ranging from 1 to 5 years. Each time of canned food should be treated according to legal standard to prevent any outbreak of foodborne illness and to keep the food at optimum condition for a long period of time. Before treatment was decided, the type of food to be canned have to be understood. During canning operation, good management practice guidelines must be strictly adhered to in accordance with the hazard analysis and critical control point standards in all the stages of canning process. Fish meats contain high concentration of water which make fish as highly perishable food. Fish are often caught far from where they are processed which can lead to spoilage. At the cannery, the fish are washed and their heads are removed before they are cooked, either by deep frying or by steam cooking. Thereafter, the fish are packed in edible oils such as olive, sunflower, soybean oil or in a tomato, chili or mustard sauce. The quality of fish start to deteriorate from the moment of death and such, techniques are recommended which will rapidly inhibit temperature-related spoilage in freshly caught fish before canning. These techniques involve, first, the use of ice which is applied directly to the fish. Second, immersion in chilled seawater tank. Third, immersion in refrigerated seawater tank. Fourth, freezing of fish harvested along distances from the cannery. Fifth, keep fish fresh or chilled by holding in frozen storage condition until processing. Standard microbiological practices could help contain the proliferation of microorganisms in food products at the cannery. The ICMSF, International Commission on Microbiological Specification for Foods, do not support incubation tests for scanned food for obvious reasons. It is however necessary for low-acid canned food like our canned fish that do not receive full botulinum cook. It is important for manufacturers to monitor spoilage trend over long period of time and to monitor pathogens like Staphylococci and Salmonella typhi that will not produce gas in many canned products. A low-acid canned food LACF, is any food other than alcoholic beverages with a Finnish equilibrium pH greater than 4.6 and a water activity greater than 0.85, excluding tomatoes and tomatoes products, having a Finnish equilibrium pH less than 4.7. Then, Gordon Boss asked on this potential microbial spoilage. Gordon showed her the spoilage progress of sample cancer gene after opening, subjected at three different storage conditions, which is at room temperature, refrigeration, and freezing. On room temperature, the open cancer gene was very fast to become spoiled. These are the progress of an open cancer gene spoilage that was left on the room temperature for 36 days. On day 3, slight cloudiness happened and putrid odor start to form. Day 12, yellow rod resembling an egg yolk and whiskers start to appear. Day 25, Whiskers start to appear on the can slit, along with black rods. Day 36, there are more whiskers which look fluffier than ever and black rods which some are grey. After this day, the changes are minor. The spoilage of open cancer gene at refrigeration temperature with temperature around 4 degrees Celsius took longer time to take place. It start to show signs of spoilage at day 37 
with putrid odor. Day 52. The sardines start to coagulate together and cloudiness happens. Day 71. There is further cloudiness and coagulation. The open can sardine that was kept at freezer with temperature around negative 18 degrees Celsius will last more than 72 days and still do not have any physical changes including formation of odor. Observation of spoiled canned sardine sample led us to believe that the type of food spoilage occurred was microbial spoilage. This microbial spoilage leads to putrefaction of the sardine as it produces an offensive odor and discoloration of meat. The other type of microbial spoilage occurring would be rancidity as there are signs of sticky oil and a really offensive odor. Clostridium does not affect the spoilage. This is because Clostridium genus are classified as obligatory anaerobes, meaning oxygen has no crucial effect on the growth rate. In this case, the fish was exposed to oxygen, thus spoilage does not occur. The microorganism involved is probably of the Proteus species such as Proteus vulgaris as they are facultative anaerobes which have the ability to utilize oxygen to break down organic matter. They also have proteolytic properties which are able to break down proteins into amino acids and this contributes to pathogenicity of the bacteria when ingested. Some Pseudomonas species such as Pseudomonas fragile or Pseudomonas landensis could grow as they are aerobic bacteria and grow very efficiently in moist environment which has the ability to secrete lipases and proteases to degrade organic compounds and cause spoilage in animal-derived products such as the canned sardines. Gordon's boss now asks on the indicators or the method of detection for the spoilage. Gordon explained that deterioration of sensory quality like off odor and off flavor of the canned fish are one of the indicators of spoilage. He suggests that it was due to putrefaction because fish has a high content of non-protein nitrogen and autolytic changes caused by the enzymes will increase the supply of nitrogenous foods and glucose for bacteria growth. From the compound supplied, the bacteria produce trimethylamine, ammonia, amines, lower fatty acids, hydrogen and other sulfides. He further explained that cloudiness will also appear which may give a bad odor and off flavor. He also stated that microbes which can produce gas such as clostridium sporogenes can cause the can to bloat by raising the pressure inside the can. Most common source of contamination that is associated with canned foods are the insufficient heating of canned food to kill all the clostridium botulinum bacteria which thrives in anaerobic conditions of a silk can. Besides that, defects in the silk can could cause bacteria from the air to be introduced through holes or improper seals. Prolonged storage of improperly sealed or punctured cans may also cause the formation of the rust. In the experiment, canned sardines had been deliberately punctured in order to observe the rate of spoilage of the canned sardine, therefore the canned food is exposed to microorganisms in the surrounding air. The nutritional value of sardine in the can attract all kinds of airborne bacteria such as spore-forming bacteria. The tools that used to puncture the canned sardines in this experiment which are hammer and screwdriver could also cause contamination to the sardines as these tools may contain molds and bacteria on its surfaces. Even though microbial growth can be seen on the cans, there are a few factors that could determine its rate of growth. First, the brand of canned sardines that was used in this experiment has the sardine packed with tomato sauce, giving a slightly acidic condition in the can. Next, exposing the sardine to the air through punctured holes will create aerobic environment within the can which allows more spoilage bacteria to grow. Third, it would be environmental temperatures as different microorganisms grow optimally at different temperatures. Therefore, it is shown that the canned sardine that was placed at refrigeration temperature and freezer temperature has less microbial growth than the canned sardine placed at room temperature. This is because microbes grow and reproduce at a slower rate at a lower temperature condition. Gordon's boss was deeply interested in the canned sardine now. However, she is still concerned regarding the possible microbial spoilage because it might cost her a fortune. So, Gordon explained to her about the possible preservation technique that can be used to prolong the shelf life. First, you have to remember that the sealed and isolated cans will avoid the influence of external conditions on the food and prevent the action of microorganisms present in the air, which allows long-term storage of food. Since raw materials are cooked or processed to achieve a certain quality in the beginning of the process, 
the further processing steps are easier to be controlled in terms of eliminating undesirable microbes. Can sardine will also undergo sterilization at 121 degrees Celsius, which will kill the clostridium within a relatively short time so that canned fish products are able to have approximately one year of shelf life. For chemical preservation approach, sodium chloride can be added to foods for its effects on sensory, functional and preservation properties. Sodium chloride inhibits microbial growth by restriction of the available water, thus lowering water activity in the meat and fish products. Several types of modified atmosphere packaging have been developed to retard growth of pathogenic microorganisms. However, microorganisms are endlessly adapting to preservative methods over time and eventually this preservative method will become less effective. Therefore, further strategies and multiple hurdles are utilized to extend shelf life. Gordon's boss was impressed and asked Gordon to proceed with his plan and start doing the proposal regarding the new canning project and hopefully it can boost the company's economy status and reduce food waste.